way. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call the public hearing to order for December 13th. Roll call, please. Johnny Blunt. Jason Hood. Here. Janice Carter Beard. Here. Lamar Marshall. Here. Mike Williams. Here. Uh, there are no items scheduled for public hearing, so we'll move right into the regular scheduled meeting. Roll call, please. Johnny Blunt. Lamar Marshall. Still here. Jason Hood. Here. Janice Carter Beard. Here. Mike Williams. Here. Council, would you leave some fresh? Oh, Heavenly Father, once again we've gathered together. Those of us who have been elected to uh, take care of this city. We pray, oh Heavenly Father, that we're all on one accord, that we're all here to make sure that we make the lives better of the citizens of this great city. We thank you, oh Heavenly Father, for everything that you are doing in our lives. We pray, oh Heavenly Father, that we are fair and just in everything that we do. These and all blessings we ask in the name of your precious son, Jesus. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 I ask all veterans and active military to please render proper salute. Captain Hood, you release the pledge. Sure. I pledge my allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the council reports, uh, the first item is a 2015-16 audit report from Kushner Lagrange LLC. Yeah, my name is Ernie Jelpe. I'm with the uh, CPA firm of Kushner Lagrange, and I'm here tonight to present the uh, audited financial statements for the year ended June 30th, 2016. Uh, as you know. Uh, the city is required to submit the audited financial statements to the legislative auditor uh, by December 31st, and we will submit these uh, tomorrow. If I may, I'd like to just point out a few do items. We, I'm, in I'm sorry, do we have copies for the council? It's a hyperlink. That was all emailed earlier. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if I may, I'd like to just point out a few items in the audited financial statements. Uh, the audit report or the audit opinion is on pages one through three, and uh, I'm happy to report that we will issue an unmodified opinion or a clean opinion, uh, which means that we believe, in our opinion, the financial statements are fairly presented, and when you hire an auditor to do the audit, that's certainly uh, the conclusion you want the uh, auditor to reach. So you have a clean opinion on your financial statements. Um, I would also suggest uh, as you go to review the financial statements, the management discussion and analysis, which is sometimes called the MDNA, uh, which is found on pages 4 through 14, that you uh, want to read through that. It will give you a brief summary of the uh, current year and also provide an analysis of the current year to prior year. Another item I'd like to bring to your attention is the uh, general fund, fund balance. Uh, the fund balance increased for the year ended June 30 of 16 by 1.9 million uh, as a result of some one-time revenues for sale of property and also uh, some reduction in expenditures. The fund balance ended up at the end of the year at about 3.1 million. Uh, the general, I mean the Government Finance Offices Association, the GFOA, uh, recommends that the general fund fund balance equate to about two months of operating expenses. So uh, for the city, that would be about 3.9 million. And at the end of the year, you were at 3.1. Uh, so you were a little lower than the recommendation by the GFOA. It's also my understanding that the fund balance since that time has gone down some, but I also uh, believe that sales tax revenue may be up this year because of the recent flooding. So uh, my recommendation there is to keep an eye on the general fund fund balance and try to uh, get it closer to that GFOA recommendation of 3.9 million. The, we also issued a report on uh, uniform guidance since you received federal funding and I'm happy to report that there were no findings of non-compliance with the uniform guidance. And because it is a governmental audit, we issued a report on internal control and compliance with state law. And uh, we also, for the current year, had no findings there. 
if you may recall, in the prior year, there were uh, some findings. We had a finding related to the preparation of financial statements and to the uh, reconciliation of fixed assets. And I would like to compliment your finance director, Seda, and her department for resolving those uh, findings and having no findings in the current year. <clears throat> So in, in summary, uh, you received a clean opinion on your audited financial statements. You did increase the general fund, fund balance from the prior year. You uh, removed the findings that you had in the prior year, and you had no findings of, uh, in, regarding internal control or compliance for the current year. So uh, I'd also like to thank the mayor and Lacey with the administration and the finance department for their cooperation and assistance as we provided our audit procedures. And I'd like to thank the council for the opportunity to uh, prepare the audit for this year. And if uh, this time, if anybody has any specific questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Any questions from the council? Any public questions or comments on audit? You should okay. get closer to that 3.9. We're up 567,000 on our taxes. Oh, good. Unfortunately, because of the storm, but fortunately for us, it looks like it'll help us with that general fund balance. Yes, yes, definitely. As soon as it's posted, we can send the link out to all council members, and you'll also be receiving a hard copy as you normally do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ricotta <coughs> sends his, um, his regards. Um, he um, is with his mom who had a little minor surgery today. She's doing well, but he asked that he come back at a later time to address the uh, council and kind of give an update on, uh, on the girls' basketball tournament that will be held uh, at the beginning of, end of February, beginning of March. February 27th. Yeah. Yeah. So, that week. Uh, are there any other council reports? Mayor? Uh, as I said, the sales tax was up. Um, $207,000 uh, the month of October. Also, uh, I uh, attended the Regional Planning Commission today with Robbie Miller, and we've been working on uh, some drainage on Old Baton Rouge Highway, which has moved into an overlay, which as of today, I had uh, I talked to Jeff uh, Roussel, and uh, he agreed that he would uh, try to expand the project to uh, sidewalk as well as bike path uh, as well. So. We may have to come up with some uh, matching funds, but as I told him, let's just do the project uh, complete and get it over with if we can. So he's going to work on that for us. I think that's going to work in our favor. Uh, they also approved uh, the University Avenue Environmental uh, to continue with the million <coughs> dollars that they put towards it to do the environmental study. Is that, uh, that should open up the corridor for, uh, for economic development uh, for us from university all the way to the back of the airport. <clears throat> so that's big for the city of Hammond and the surrounding area. Also, the contract with Barbie Tallow uh, was still negotiating. She was in, in Tennessee the week prior. I was in, in uh, Vegas with the uh, air show last week. Andre is out this week, so we should wrap that up at the beginning of the next week and uh, have a contract to present to you next, week, next meeting in January. Um, and other than that, the, you know, I hope everyone's enjoying the Christmas lights. That's uh, our city's work so hard to put up. Yes, sir, you had a question. I had a question about the, um, about the uh, first one on the drainage. Um, now, we, have, we approved capital dollars in the budget this year for that project. So I'm assuming that at some point, if we're not able to get that done this year, I, you know, I want to make sure that we were able to, and you know, we talked about, <clears throat> it was approved by the council to get that work done this year. What I'm hoping so, is we're going to be able to take those dollars and match it completely. So I guess the point is that we, we, I think we put enough in the budget to do the project without any match. Unless, the just the drainage itself. Please answer. The appropriation of the capital project Chuck, was Chuck. to get from Timberlane. Please tell me about your name. <laughs> I know your name. I just want to say the appropriation the capital projects was to extend the work from Timberlane, the low area in Timberlane, down to Old Baton Rouge Highway and neither east or west. We met with the highway department maybe a month ago, not quite a month ago, and they are agreeing, or at least they're preliminarily agreeing, to change out the crossing near Latter-day Saints, which is less money for us, 
but they, we have to put up a match for that work. And they're ex expecting that crossing without the other improvements that they were contemplating to be around 250. So we'd have to put up a quarter of that. So that's 100 and something thousand we have. We would, that would take care of the crossing, but we still have to get from Timberlane to the crossing. So the answer to your question is yes, but we got to get the crossing in before we can do any of our work. Okay. So I just want to and it looks that. like that may just that's the first I've heard the report. Looks like that's on the that's got a green light to, for them to change out that crossing where we can tie to it. Okay. Right. So I didn't answer your text, by the way. Oh, I was, thank you. Okay. I appreciate that. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, do we have any new businesses that would like to be recognized? Okay. Uh, if everyone had an opportunity to. Um, oh, oh, no. Do you have QC Okay, we'll call on you just one minute. Thank you. Um, minutes. Has everyone, if everyone had an opportunity to review the minutes of November 22nd, um, I will entertain a motion. Second. Roll call, please. Lamar Marshall. Aye. Jason Hood. Aye. Mike Williams. Aye. Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Motion approved. Um, old business item number one resolution to ratify and award bids received <coughs> November 18, 2016 for sewer system improvements for year 2017, project 616 Chuck. These bids were tabled at the November 22nd meeting because of the lift station site was not had been not been uh, properly or not been turned over to the city. So that now is, I see it'd be item four on your in introduction of ordinances. Uh, however, I would recommend, you do have a bid summary. Matter of fact, the low bidder is with us tonight. It's the only one in the room wearing shorts, I think. Yeah. Um, the low bidder was lost in Benet in the amount of $319,230.20. It was in excess of what we budgeted. It primarily is a replacement of the old Lowe's lift station over by Ross Downing Chevrolet. We're moving it to a new location next to the uh, Enterprise site. And we're extending sewer to uh, Chauvin Drive, which is a commitment the city made in 2008. And we're extending the sewer down to the existing Lowe's lift station. And we're going to pump to across the road. And the uh, second aspect of this is extending sewer to pick up additional services on uh, Airport Road. Right now we have no sewer south of, Air, south of uh, 190. So this is Airport Road. You've seen the development going on right there close to 190. These people have requested and have signed right of ways and we're going to lay sewer and I assume they're annexing or already annexed. I don't know where the situation with annexation is, but that will pick up that corridor. So that's going to be a pretty good commercial corner. corner. I would hope we get a good, some good sales tax there. So these are kind of like <clears throat> two locations. And uh, I recommend awarding to the low bidder <clears throat> Lawson Benet in the amount of three hundred nineteen thousand two hundred thirty dollars and twenty cents. Any questions for Chuck? Any public questions, comments? Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Lamar Marshall. Aye. Jason Hood. Aye. Mike Williams. Aye. Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Motion approved. Thank you, Chuck. New business, item number one, a resolution to approve QC Food and Deli located at 1705 Fagan Drive, Hammond, Louisiana, to obtain a permit to sell packaged high-low alcohol to owners Tiger Food Mart, LLC. Ms. Jenny. Good afternoon. This is an existing business that's located on Fagan. It's um, about, what, half a block behind uh, Don Seafood, if you're not familiar with the where it's at. Um, they uh, have had a change in ownership and they were previously selling packaged high-low alcohol uh, with the previous owner. So with the change of ownership, we are um, asking that they be allowed to sell high-low. They've met all their uh, specifications that we've required. And we do have a representative here tonight if y'all have any questions or need to talk to them about, about it. I'm going to ask them to come up. Yes, please. Can you state your name and address of the record? Um, Beverly Perry, 14429 Artie Drive. Okay. Amy Gibson, 4304 North Belleville Road. Okay. Um, Y'all co-owners? Uh, we employees. Okay, um, okay. well, we like the, uh, the applicant for um, alcohol permits to come before the council so we can 
basically put them on a record to make sure that you understand the laws concerning sales of alcohol to minors and know that the police um, will be checking. They yes. have a pretty active um, program to check for sales for minors. So we just want to make sure that you guys understand that. Yes, sir. Okay. No, I think we've had managers in the past. Are y'all, are y'all, I mean, are y'all representing the owner? Yes, sir. Okay, just as long as somebody's on the record, I'm okay. I'm okay. <coughs> motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Lamar Marshall. Aye. Jason Hood. Aye. Mike Williams. Aye. Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Motion to approve. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Item number two, resolution to approve budget change form number 1704, transferring $70,000 for sewer repairs, Dakota, Iowa, project 616-11702 to sewer system improvements for year 2017, project 616-11405. Chuck. Yeah, this is the budget change form 1704 is what it looks like. It's hyperlinked. It's basically taking $70,000 from the Dakota, Iowa sewer improvements, leaving 93000 there. Uh, to, to allow us to do the additional work on Airport Road, which we had not have originally budgeted. <clears throat> so this is a $70,000 transfer. We do leave $93,000 there, and uh, uh, Jason and I have not talked about it, but we're going to bore that stretch behind those two, those houses. So that will be more than enough to, rather than open cut and tear everybody's fences and so forth up in the rear, this is pretty much from Chris Broadwater and Judd Matheny down to the intersection of General Pershing. A set of manhole General Pershing, set of manhole back at uh, General Patton and Bohr, and then we're going to have to get in there somehow and tie in services, which is going to be a lot of fun. I hope to be out of town when that happens. Anyway, that's another project. That'll come up uh, as soon as I can get the, uh, the SSCS done, the, the cleaning TV. They've not been successful. Cleaning and TV in is so full of roots, they can't get in it. We've tried chemicals. We've tried a lot of different things. They were scheduled to come in August the 15th. And as you can well know, we didn't get them on August 15th, and they're still not here to do that work, to do that cleaning TV work. But we expect to get them as soon as we get two, three weeks of dry weather now. They said they've caught up, they've done all their flood damage work throughout the Florida parishes, and they'll be back in the, to do the Dakota, which is off the subject, because this is really, I'm just trying to explain that we're not hurting on, on Dakota and Iowa. So this is a transfer, it's a direct transfer in the 616 fund, which is the sewer, the enterprise fund, sewer and water enterprise fund. No new, not a new appropriation. There won't be any additional funds coming out of that account. This is a move from one project to another. Mm -hmm. Sir? I was just listening to you. I was just wondering if you were going to be. Give us any more of an explanation. Do you want more? Yeah. I can no, give you a lot more. <laughs> how long How long will you have? Well, I miss you, Chuck. <laughs> we haven't seen you in a while, so it's good to hear your voice. Oh, sorry. Uh, can you come up, Ms. Louise? Sir? He's got a question. Comment. Louise Bostick, 112 Elm Drive. I just don't understand where Dakota Iowa is. Makes Dakota Boston. Iowa? Dakota is the street that runs along St. Albert's. That's Dakota. Yes. And goes all the way to the Dakota. canal. I think and I, huh? I'm sorry. Idaho is the next street over. Idaho. It yeah. says Iowa. It should be Idaho. Yeah. That's my okay. mistake. Okay. Sorry. <coughs> I was over by you. Yeah, that's, I was that's over you by your rent house. We don't true. ever get any improvement over there. That's We've been true. promising that's not true. drainage for that's not true. about six years, it's and we're still flooded today. Well, based on this agenda, uh, Louise, if you leave Iowa in there, then it would go there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better want to change it. I was sort of happy, but I didn't. You should have left it alone. We could have probably got a room. Yes, you need to change it. We have to. I, I, would make, I would ask for a motion to change it to Idaho so there's no confusion. <laughs> you could have had it. It's too late. <laughs> Confusions are on okay. We don't offer an amendment to change the in the, in the uh, resolution change uh, the street Iowa Dakota Iowa to Dakota Idaho. Second. Roll call, please. Lamar Marshall. Aye. Jason Hood. Aye. Mike Williams. Aye. Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Motion to approve to amend. Motion to approve uh, resolution two. Second. Roll call, please. 
Lamar Marshall, Aye. Jason Hood, Aye. Mike Williams, Aye. Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Motion approved. Item number three, resolution to approve change order number three on sewer rehabilitation, infiltration, and flow repairs, project 616-31401 in an amount not to exceed $85,000 for Dixie Court Rosewood sewer repairs. Chuck. Yeah, we have an existing contract with uh, um, Institute of Farm Technologies, and we have a point repair and sewer companion to that project. And this problem at Dixie Court and Rosewood has been ongoing. <clears throat> we do have some work scheduled next week. I think it's next week. <clears throat> Excuse me, in front of the bowling alley. <clears throat> Excuse me. However, when we did a little further research in the last two weeks, uh, there have been quite a number of calls. Guy, Guy Palermo has asked to plug us into that mix because he's been getting a lot of service calls. We find out that the sewer line on Dixie Court, which is only about 220 feet long, is very shallow and the services are very flat and that every time it rains, nobody can use it in their sewerage. So we're going to relay sewer back to the north, eventually tied into Church Street. In other words, it's going to go the other direction. But in the meantime, we're going to set a grinder, a duplex grinder, a reversible duplex grinder lift station there so that these people don't have this problem for the next hour of long. Uh, I'll put this here where the, it's unusual that you don't have an exact number. I do have a number, but I have to get the contractor to quote it and, the, and to turn it in as an official quote. And we just got the price on the pump station yesterday. So I don't have anybody's final numbers yet. We have all that we know what we're going to do. We know exactly what we're going to do. I know how much it's, it should cost, but I don't know what they're going to quote us when we get the quotes back because every item in this particular part of the job is not in the original contract. So I've got to get a couple of items bid by the or negotiated with the a contractor to add this work. So it's the 200 block, I believe, of Dixie Court, and it's going to run from Clark to the back cul de sac of Dixie Court. And eventually, it will run all the way north to Church. to what we call Arkansas Frozen Foods, pump station number one. Probably when we get $200,000, we'll, this will take care of this for a while. And then if we can appropriate more money next year, we'll take care of it in permanently. So I recommend approval so we can move forward and not lose any more days getting this work initiated. Motion to approve. Lamar Marshall, Aye. Jason Hood, Aye. Mike Williams, Aye. Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Motion approved. Number four, resolution to accept work as substantially complete on conversion to <coughs> salary WWTP oxidation ditch for year 2014, project 616-11003, commencing a 45-day lean period and withholding 5% retainage. Yes, this is our grant, million dollar grant we got from the state. The city put up around 200000 is that right, Lacey? Something in that neighborhood. And the other million dollars came from the states uh, as a grant. We've been kind of holding off. We have about $20,000 left in the grant to do some other things around the south plant that would help, but the state has uh, declined to fund any of the additional work we want done because in their opinion it's not. The initial scope of the work for which the grant was funded has been completed and this is an expansion of scope of work. It's lights, putting up lights. They said you didn't ask for lights before, why you want lights now? So it's not a big deal. We were just been waiting for two months for an answer and we got the answer and the answer is no. So we would like to close the project out and put in grant requests for next year so we can get that, get it meet thresholds for the 2017 block grant program. So I recommend acceptance. We are withholding 5% retainage because the job is in excess of 500,000. We can't hold more than 5% retain each. And it'll take 45 days from the clear liens before we can disperse their retainage. So I recommend acceptance is substantially complete. Second. Roll call, please. Lamar Marshall. Aye. Mike Williams. Aye. Jason Hood. Aye. Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Motion approved. Thank you, Chuck. Number five, resolution to accept a review for review or report from the Zoning Commission concerning a proposed expansion of the Hammond Historic District. The Zoning Commission voted 3 2 to deny expanding the district. Lacey. Tonight, what you are preparing to do is just accept the report. Uh, this has been a very lengthy process taken up this year. What you have in your report we'll go through in just a second, but Andre felt it was important for us to set a timeline for this. Basically, by accepting the report tonight, you will then have 90 days within which to act. You may either introduce an ordinance to expand the historic district, 
or you may introduce an ordinance to deny the expansion of the district. But you will have 90 days from the meeting tonight, the acceptance of the report going forward within which to act. So what you will find within your binders are all the things that we have done over this last year concerning this project. Uh, first, you have a table of contents and a timeline at the very beginning. The timeline explains everything from the point of you authorizing the committee to be appointed back in last December to the current date, all the public meetings and publications that have been held and had um, to describe the input, the decisions, and the different ways that this has moved from the historic study committee to the zoning commission and now to your table for decision making. Um, as part of your report, you have the attorney memos section, has all the, the two main memos from Andre Kudrain that describe the process, the overall process of expanding the historic district. Much of this is outlined in state law, and that's why it's different from our normal planning and zoning activities. It has a different timeline and it has some different requirements in terms of public hearings and input. Um, so the first memo that you'll see is his overall explanation of the process. The second memo that you'll see from him explains some of the critical questions that we have gone through this process to better understand going forward. You'll also see um, a quick fact sheet that has been updated to reflect what a historic district is, how this impacts property owners. That was mailed out earlier to property owners and is now included in your packet. Uh, you'll also see the original uh, when planning and zoning sent it back to the study committee for more information. That's all in your attorney memo section. The second section of your report is the zoning report. This is the most current report that came from the zoning commission there, with their recommendation. You'll see a copy of their meeting minutes, a map of the proposed expansion area, and the suggested language to uphold the zoning commission's recommended, recommendation to deny the expansion. The third section of your report is the full study committee report. This report includes a description of the study committee's recommendation to approve the expansion, a map of their proposed expansion area, conflicts that they see between the historic district guidelines and those of the residential preservation district, otherwise known as Bankers Row area, and meeting minutes of all the meetings that they held. Um, I think there were five total meetings, if I remember off the top of my head. In in that packet. The fourth section is the city's outreach. This includes all of the letters that were sent out from the mayor's office to the property owners, all of who may be impacted in the original area. Uh, it contains the meeting notices. We did some postcards to try to help people remember the meeting dates. And we also did a survey response card that was sent by a certified letter to all the potentially impacted property owners to gain their input about whether they were in favor or against the expansion and any other comments that they had with regards to that. In the final section of your binder, what you'll see is public comments. The first part of that includes a spreadsheet that summarizes all of the survey cards and all of the positions that people articulated in the public meetings that we have had thus far on this matter. It also contains just a brief summary of the comments that were held during those public meetings um, and those who are in favor and opposed or questions that were asked, what their concerns are. Behind that spreadsheet, you'll see all the email correspondence and phone calls that were received by City Hall and uh, Planning and Zoning during this process. So you'll see the detailed information provided by many property owners of their positions and their questions and kind of what we have gone through during this year of understanding the process and moving forward. So with that said, that is your report in full. It contains everything that has happened from the beginning point to the point where we are now. Enjoy your reading over the holidays. <laughs> well, Lacey, thank you for a very thorough very report. You're welcome. Uh, it's going to help us, I know for me, um, make an informed, educated decision. As any other public comments are received by City Hall, we always forward those to whatever body is currently making a decision about it. So if there are additional public comments received, whether those are via email or phone calls that we receive, those will be forwarded to you as soon as they are received. Thank Any you. questions for Lacey? Any comments? Any public comments or questions? All right. I entertain a motion to accept the report as presented. 
Second. Roll call, please. Lamar Marshall. Aye. Mike Williams. Aye. Jason Hood. Aye. Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Motion approved. Number six, a resolution of purchase from Arco, a generator upgraded weather enclosure and automatic transfer switch, ATS for lift station 10, and a generator fuel tank upgraded weather enclosure and ATS for lift station 39 for $57,065.96. Have attachments, Charles The reason I'm up here is because this is going to be purchased uh, primarily with grant funds. This was a uh, grant from the Pontchartrain Restoration Foundation that you guys had previously approved. We had talked about lift station 10 and 39. 10 is uh, at CM Fagan and South Morrison. 39 is out there behind the Winn Dixie Warehouse Distribution Center. Um, there should have been attached two quotes. Um, on page five, if you're looking for an itemized breakdown of the costs, per generator, um, that's what you'll find on page five. These are older <coughs> quotes, but these are under state contract. Uh, and we have confirmed, Jazz Rousseau with um, Water and Sewer has confirmed that these are still good prices. I actually spot checked some of those prices myself on the state contract. They are good prices. We will be spending about $1,900 more per generator uh, for an aluminum enclosure. And according to Janice, this is to um, protect the generator against sewer gra uh, gases, which tend to corrode the standard metal enclosure. So this is typical of what we do. The total for both generators is at 5706596. Uh, one will be natural gas. That's for lift station 10. The cost on that will be 28,967.90. And for lift station 39, which will be diesel powered because of its location back there, kind of in the woods behind Winn Dixie, 28,098.06. And so we're asking for your approval so we can move forward with the purchasing process because this was over $30,000. Questions for Charles? Any public questions or comments? Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Jason Hood. Aye. Lamar Marshall. Aye. Mike Williams. Aye. Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Motion approved. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Seven resolution to transfer $24,800 from general fund, 100 balance to personal personnel consultant services for the comprehensive classification and compensation study. Lacey. This is bring, being brought forward. I made a mistake and thought this, these funds had already been budgeted. This is a salary study that we are required to perform every two years according to ordinance, and we left this out of the budget. So what we are asking you to do is take it from the general fund balance and award it into uh, the Human Resources Department. Um, Loretta Severan will be overseeing this contract. Um, she presented the bids um, quite thoroughly at the last meeting. We have not not yet signed a contract, just so you know. Um, so and with your permission, we will go forward with appropriating these funds and then sign the contract to go forward with the work. Any questions for Lisa? Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. <coughs> Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Jason Hood. Aye. Lamar Marshall. Aye. Mike Williams. Aye. Motion approved. Thank you. Aye. Introduction of ordinance to accept public hearing number one. An introduction of an ordinance to amend the Hammond Code of Ordinance, Chapter 14, regarding the, regarding the Fire Prevention Code. I am not Richie Neal. I am here on his behalf. He had another thing to take care of tonight. What we are doing, you'll see the red copy is marked up on your hyperlink. Um, we are basically setting in motion for the Hammond City Ordinance to follow state um, guidelines. And when the state updates their uh, guidelines, Ours will automatically be updated. We, it will not require an ordinance change on our behalf. This also brings us into compliance with the national codes on fire safety. Motion to introduce. Second. Roll call, please. Lamar Marshall. Aye. Jason Hood. Aye. Mike Williams. Aye. Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Motion approved. Public hearing set for December 27, 2016. Chief Neal will be here for that public hearing. Number two, an introduction of ordinance declaring removal of property a surplus and not needed for a public purpose and providing for a donation to benefit public safety. Janet Thurman. Hi. We're asking uh, council approval to declare two avalanche DT bicycles, which was once part of our bike unit for the PD, which was no longer active. Um, we're asking to declare it surplus property. Upon de declared the approval, we then ask that y'all authorize the mayor to donate one bike to Wildlife and Fisheries and the other bike to CNN Railroad. It's Motion not your normal bikes. 
Second. Roll call, please. Lamar Marshall. Aye. Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Jason Hood. Aye. Mike Williams. Aye. Motion approved. Public hearing set for December 27, 2016. Item number three, introduction of an ordinance to approve expanded conditional use request by Emil W. Nettles. Emily, I'm Emily. sorry. Emily. I did the same thing earlier. Uh, to allow sales and consumption of alcohol in conjunction with a salon spa located at 200 Southwest Railroad Avenue, Suite B, in accordance with site plan dated 10 14 2016. Historic DDD recommended approval with condition by Zoning Commission. Tracy. Good afternoon. This is an um, expanded conditional use to allow sales and consumption of alcohol for a salon and spa, specifically for just their customers. Um, this is located at the Square 71 building that was just constructed. It's going to be in the upper story on the corner. Um, and the Zoning Commission made a condition that this is only for their business and if they were sold or the closed, or closed whatever, yeah, this would no longer be in effect. Motion to introduce. Second. Lamar Marshall. Aye. Jason Hood. Aye. Mike Williams. Aye. Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Public hearing set for December 27, 2016. Motion approved. Thank, Thank you. you. Item number four, introduction of ordinance to authorize the mayor to execute an agreement for the acceptance of property for lift station and acceptance of sewer servitudes for the new PS number seven lift station site. Chuck Spangler. This is Pump Station 7. You just awarded a contract to build that. This is a 25 by 25 site uh, on the north, just immediately north of the Enterprise uh, car place um, on Marson Boulevard. We're moving the old, old station from the canal next to Ross Downing to a new location. It's been donated. All we had to pay for was a survey. And um, any time the, the city acquires real property of any kind, you have to uh, acquire it by ordinance. So in the old days, we just sign up right away and record it right away and it would become the city's. But it, according to Andre, we, we have to go through an ordinance. It has to be, so this is an acceptance. There was no chart. We didn't have to pay for the site, by the way. It was donated. Who was it? Who donated it? Ed Hoover or Steve or Peggy or one of them. I don't remember which. Somebody in the Hoover family or all of them. <laughs> Ed would probably say Peggy. Ed would probably say Peggy. Probably. I think he signed Animar Properties. I don't really know who the chief operating officers are. I think maybe Steve did sign it, but I'm really not sure about that. Motion to introduce. So Second. Roll call, please. Lamar Marshall. Aye. Jason Hood. Aye. Mike Williams. Aye. Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Motion approved. December 27th is public hearing. So motion to adjourn. So, so moved. All in favor. Aye.